We continue the message on Pentecost celebration. Our text is Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, which reads thus, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Now the question is, what is the anointing? There are many definitions of anointing, but the simplest definition is to apply oil or ointment on a person, especially as a religious ceremony. Now, that is a simple definition. But the definition we wish to use for this message, the one that we shall describe as most suitable for our message, is spiritual electricity or divine electricity. Now, when we talk about electricity, I'm not going to define it. We can say electricity is electricity. Virtually every Nigerian knows what an electricity is. But there are differences in voltage. Voltage differs. For example, when we talk of anointing, the anointing that cures cancer, for example, is different from the one for headache. If someone has headache, anointing can cure it. But that one is different from the anointing that cures cancer. It's different from the one that brings back the dead, that raises the dead and brings them back to life. Now, these are different types of voltage. But when we talk, whenever we talk about the anointing, the big question is, who gives the anointing? Anointing can come from three sources. First, it can come from God, and this is the best. This is the best. God's anointing is glorious. It is powerful. It is active and dynamic. God's anointing is the best. Number two, anointing can come from Satan and his evil angels. Satan and his evil angels. Now all witches, all wizards, all magicians, all tricksters are anointed. It could be to play tricks or to engage in magic and they are anointed of the devil for diabolical purposes. Now you need the anointing from God, not from the devil. The question is, why do you need the anointing? That's the next question. Why anointing? Number one, anointing brings authority. Anointing brings authority and power. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 35. And also in Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Number two, anointing teaches. Anointing teaches. First John chapter 2, verse 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, that you don't need that any man should teach you, but the anointing within you teaches. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1 to 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1 to 14. Number three, it is the anointing that qualifies you for the work, the service that you are entitled to engage in. Anointing endures puny men with a sort of omnipotency. 
the anointing, especially what we call the new anointing, makes you a creator. That is the anointing. John chapter 6, verse 28. John chapter 6, verse 28. And number four, anointing results in unquestionable success when one is anointed of God. Anointing results in unquestionable success, especially when one is anointed of God. And number five, when the anointing comes upon a person, causes are broken. When the anointing comes upon a person, causes are broken. Anointing breaks the yoke. Anointing breaks the yoke. What are the signs of the cause? And many people are under the cause. But what breaks the yoke of causes is anointing. Number one, a sickness or a disease whose cause is unknown or a sickness or a disease which defies all treatments. That is a sign that someone is under a cause. Number two, barrenness of a type. We are all medical examinations show that you are normal. Some people are barren. They visit hospitals and every ed- examination reveals that they are normal. They don't know the reason for their barrenness. That type of barrenness could be a sign of a cause. Then, number three, almost always about to get it, but never making it. Some people, when they enter into a business venture, as they are about to make it, and people are saying, yes, it's almost always about to make it, the fellow doesn't make it almost always about to make it but never making it that is an uh, that's uh, that's an indication that the fellow might be under a cause then mysterious serious and continuous tragedy in a particular family mysterious and continuous tragedy in a particular family for example, in some families, they have what is called hereditary madness. That is an indication that this guy is, this fellow is under a cause. For example, hereditary madness. That is a mysterious and continuous tra- tra- tragedy. Now, there are different types of anointing. What are the types of anointing we have from God? There are two types of anointing from God. There is the old anointing. The old anointing was the type Elijah had. The type that called down fire for the destruction of God's enemy. Then there is the new anointing. The new anointing was the type. Elisha had the type whose bones raised up the dead as confirmed in Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 and of course like that of our Lord Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 10 verse 38 Acts chapter 10 verse 38 so what you need is the new anointing which is meant for deliverance. What are the means of transfer of this anointing? Number one, divine electricity or anointing can be transferred through conduction. That is for you to receive the anointing, you must be a conductor and not an insulator. It can be true conductor, just like electricity. So you place it somewhere, it moves in. Now, it can also be by convention. That is from one suitable medium to another. 
And that's what we have in Mark chapter 16 from verse 17 to 18. So it can move from one suitable medium to another object. For example, a man of God can pray with an handkerchief and give it to someone to lay on the sick and the sick will recover. That is by convention. Then it can be radiation. That is, it can jump. Anointing can flow from the word. That is the spoken word of God to the sick. As confirmed in Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. Send the word and his word goes out and the word heals the sick and the word delivers. That's the word. So he sent his word. That's the anointing. By sending the word, the anointing can go out by what we call convention. So anointing can go by radiation and then it can jump. It is possible for the anointing to jump. It can go through the word of God and the word of God will now set free. As stated in Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. And there the Bible says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He sent His word and His word healed them. He sent it and the word delivered them from their destructions. That is the anointing jumping. Now, whether the anointing is by conduction or by convention or by radiation, one thing is certain, anointing breaks the yoke. So what is the condition for the new anointing to work? Number one, condition is this. Victory over Satan is an essential ingredient to receiving the anointing. You must have obtained victory over Satan before you can receive the anointing. Now there are certain steps to receiving victory over Satan. And this is confirmed in Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 to 25. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 18 to 25. It is noteworthy that the Lord did no miracle at all until he had settled Satan. Let's look at the steps. Number one is baptism in water. This represents what we can call our conversion and water baptism. As confirmed in John chapter 3 verse 3, you must be born again. Then is baptism with the Holy Spirit. Is baptism with the Holy Spirit. And number three is fasting and victory over satanic temptation. We too must overcome sin, Satan and self, be, that is the flesh, before the anointing can walk and continue to walk. Definitely, we should be sanctified. Now, we must be willing. That's another condition. Number one is that we must have victory over Satan. And number two is this. We should be willing. This is confirmed in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. We must be willing. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the goods of the land. Brethren, the new anointing is workable. It's a workable idea. There are many ways when people, how people respond to idea. So when we say there is the new anointing, it works. But some people are insecure. For example, insecure people, when a new idea is presented, they hibernate. They, they, they will not pray. They don't pay much attention to ideas. They want, what they want is that they run away from good ideas. They are afraid that they might fail or that they might have to spend too much effort. So what they do is that they hibernate. The new anointing works. 
It saves the sick, he sends his word, his word heal them and deliver them from their destructions. It works. Now, the next group of people are the lazy people. The anointing might not work. A new idea might not work for a lazy people. Because what lazy people do is that they luxuriate. They luxuriate, luxury. So they don't pay much attention to ideas. They want to enjoy the pleasure of this moment. For example, the new anointing involves that you fast, you pray. Nothing comes easy. But another group of people are wounded people. What they do is that they commiserate. They say, it is a good idea, but I couldn't do it. I've tried it so often, it hasn't worked. Well, let me just accept it as my fate. Then there is another group of people, foolish people. They procrastinate. God is going to settle your own case now. That is it. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not soon, not seen. But you see, foolish people, they put off asking or acting on, the, on their on new ideas. But there is another group of people, wise people. What do they do? They dedicate. They can do it now people they don't waste a good moment they don't waste a good moment on a good opportunity they believe that now is the day of salvation now is the acceptable time they believe that their salvation is now they believe that their healing is now they believe that their prosperity is now they believe that their deliverance is now they believe that their miracles will come to them right now. They are the wise people. Now, the third and final point is that there must be constant link with the Holy Spirit through prayers and fasting. Now, brethren, let's take note of two things, even as we conclude this message. Number one is that anger switches off the anointing, but watches switches them on so in conclusion we are looking at the case of elijah elisha how elisha was used of god to perform miracle in the city of jericho elisha was a wise person he did not behave like those people who put off new idea the new anointing he wanted was from the old anointing of Elijah and he wanted a new idea. He could have done like the insecure people who hibernate. Instead of following Elijah, he could have run away from him. He didn't. He could have behaved like the lazy people who luxuriate. He should not have followed him to Jericho, but he continued to follow, even to Jordan. He could have behaved like the wounded people who come straight. He could have said, well, this is a good idea. Oh, the double portion is good, but I don't want it. He could have behaved like the foolish people who procrastinate and say later on. Or, but he behaved like a wise person who did what was right. He dedicated. Now, how did he turn dead to life? in Jericho when they called on him after receiving the anointing that the water where they were, which they were using was dead that is that water was no longer bringing life it was the water was no longer sweet and then he did something number one Elisha threw the salt at the source of the water when the new anointing begins to flow your problems will be solved at the very source. As I'm speaking now, the new anointing is flowing. I don't know what your problems are. Whatever might be the problem, as, Eli as God did in the life of Elisha, who received the new anointing, and he went straight to the source of the problem in that city of Jericho, the Lord will go into the source of your problem and he removed it. Number two, Elisha pronounced blessings on the water. When the anointing begins to flow, 
blessings can be pronounced with the necessary backing of the anointing and death will be changed to life. Is there anything dead in your body, in your business, in your life? Is there anything dead in your profession, in your education? They will all be brought back to life in Jesus' name. And those who are financially rich can begin to prosper again when the anointing begins to move. All round austerity will be changed to all round prosperity. And that includes physical, material, mental, and spiritual. Now there are some people who have what we can call all round mental austerity. Some people cannot remember whatever they read. Now that one will be changed and you will become a genius when the anointing begins to flow. Then fear, sorrows, anxiety will be changed to peace, joy, happiness. Now, when anointing begins to flow, certain things will happen and that's the difficult aspect. Some small boys who decided to be used of the devil and they could be likened to agents of the devil. They were caused by Elisha and they died. Let me tell you something. As the new anointing will begin to flow now, all those who have been mocking you and saying, where is your God? Will be silenced forever. Once the anointing begins to flow in the name of Jesus. Finally, the Bible says, in Obadiah verse 17, Obadiah verse 17, the Bible says, But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. But he upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there be, shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess your possession. I speak and prophesy to your life that anointing is your own possession. Rise up now and possess your possession. Shall we pray? Blessed Redeemer, we want to give thanks to you. We want to thank you for your word that has come out with power, with strength, with anointing. Lord, we pray that the new anointing will work for us, even right now in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who need healing, those needing deliverance, those needing miracles, those needing divine touch. Father, even as we pray right now, touch them divinely in Jesus' name. Let there be miracles, let there be signs, let there be wonders. As your word says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be holiness, and there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. We pray, O oh Lord, that everyone at the influence of our voice will possess his or her possession in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name, Lord. Save sinners, heal the sick, Deliver the oppressed, set the captives free, and gladden the earth of every saint. Blessed be thy name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.